waiting for this for years now. This is Anchor's brand new MacGo wireless battery charger, and it runs at 15 watts of power compared to Apple's, which they themselves limit to just 7.5. That should mean that your iPhone should charge twice as fast, right? Well, not exactly. It is the first Qi 2 enabled wireless battery pack, so technically that spec is legit, and you can buy it for 90 bucks compared to Apple's 100. I tested these with my 15 Pro Max that has quite a large battery inside, but this anchor is rated for 10 1,000 milliamp hours. Believe it or not, Apple's is rated for 1,460. So how can I even be comparing these? Well, inside of here, there are actually two separate packs that gives it a different voltage than everything else on the market. So if you do the math, we actually get 2,920 of equivalent uh, milliamp hours. Now, if we compare the size, you could see that we have that difference. Apple's is so thin, it is so light, it is smaller in every way compared to Anchor's behemoth of a wireless charging pack. And just putting it onto my iPhone, it dominates this whole setup. Now, you can use it in the hand, but you definitely feel it compared to Apple's, which is so tiny and so nice connected to your phone. Now, Anchors does have a few more features compared to the slick, minimalistic Apple One. Now, on the back, we have this kickstand, and that is absolutely nice if you're gonna be charging up your phone and you're gonna be watching some videos, either in landscape or in horizontal like this. So that is a nice feature. And with that, we actually have a display on the side. I love this because when you have it attached to the back, it will tell you how long it will last. More on this in just a bit. And if you're charging it with USB type C, it will also display how long it takes to charge. By the way, it takes close to two and a half hours compared to an hour and 15 minutes for Apple's. The MagSafe pack does use light but it has a few tricks up its sleeve, which I'll leave for a little bit because I wanna to get to the charging test. Now, for the phone to power up, it took a minute and a half compared to just 30 seconds for the Qi 2 enabled anchor charger. That right there is an impressive difference. And after the first 15 minutes, Apple's charger got us to 7%, but Anchor's got us to a massive 17% charge. That is an insane difference, and it made me so excited for this new battery. And at the 30 minute mark, Apple's gained 10% up to 17, which is great, but Anchor's only gained five. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And at 45 minutes, Apple's reached 26, while Anchor's only gained six points, so they are getting very close to the total amount charged. This is where I pulled out my thermal camera and we got 37 degrees maximum for Apple's and that actually is the same on the back of the phone. And this is the same result that you would get using other chargers like their official puck. Whereas Anchors hit 40 degrees Celsius on the battery pack and then the iPhone had more heat overall. So you guys have to know that with wireless charging, your phone heats up and then these things slow down and that is what's causing this thing to not run like it should. I'll actually compare the performance to Anger's new Qi 2 puck in just a little bit. After one hour, Apple's had 36 charge compared to 38. So they are running very close here and that just shows that in the beginning, we had a huge boost with 15 watt, but at the end, they basically equal out. They both gained 10% there. And at one hour and 15 minutes, we had 41 for Apple's and 43 for Anchor's. So the charging performance is identical. Now, this is where Apple's battery actually died and it did not charge my 15 Pro Max more than 41%, while of course we have a lot more battery left over in this one. At an hour and 30, we hit 52%, and then an hour 45, we got to 59, then 66 at two hours, and at 215, we have 74% charge, and then it took two and a half hours to reach 
80%. Now I wanna pause right here and let you guys know that around this time, we had roughly 35, 36% battery remaining. And that's a huge discrepancy because the iPhone has roughly 4,400 milliamp hours. This thing is rated for 10,000. Well, the rating here isn't true because the voltages don't match up. So it's actually lower when you're charging an iPhone. And because it's a wireless charging pack, you are gonna lose uh, battery to heat, also the conversions and everything else. And even though Anchor on the website shows off the special chips and everything else, you still have a lot of power loss. Now, when you do the math, this thing took about 7,000 milliamp hours to charge the iPhone, roughly 35 so we're getting roughly 50% efficiency up to the 80% mark. And that does not sound that good. And at two hours, 45 minutes, unfortunately, we were still at 80%. And I think that there's so much heat at this point built up and trapped in here that it is just stalling out. And no, I did not have optimized charging turned on. It just had to cool down. Whereas Anchor's official puck with Qi2, the heat is not trapped in a bunch of batteries. At three hours, thankfully, we hit 84%, and then we hit 88% at three hours and 15, and 96% at three and a half hours. And this is where this thing actually died. It hit 1%. We stopped charging on my iPhone and that is the most that it could charge. So when we look overall, we do have this one that can go up to only 41%. This one hits 96. That's more than twice as good. But when we convert the milliamp hours, this thing has triple the capacity. So there is a lot of inefficiencies in here where you're not maximizing it. So technically, if you have a 15 Pro Max and you wanna buy one of these, you are only gonna get about one full charge. Now, thankfully, on the bottom of this thing, we have that USB Type-C port and you can grab a cable and plug in your iPhone and not use the wireless and then you will get closer to two full charges from this battery pack instead of about one. That is way better. And this is one area where Anchors actually smokes apples because you cannot get any power out of this lightning port. Uh, it's just power coming in. Now, both of these can actually uh, do pass-through charging. So you can use it as a nightstand charger, plug in USB Type-C, and it will charge up the battery pack in your phone. And because that's 15 watt, um, it will charge it fairly decently, not as good as the puck. And with that mentioned, let's take a look at the performance difference. Surprisingly, at the start, the battery pack does better, but then as it moves on, we have a difference in charging speeds, especially at the end there. And and because of the heat that's built in, if you think that this will perform the same as other Qi2 wireless chargers, it will not. So don't get your hopes up. Now, there is one cool feature with Apple's. If you plug in your Lightning or USB into your iPhone, overnight it can actually reverse wirelessly charge this battery pack. So you'll wake up to both being charged, but you can't charge this on a wireless charger on Unfortunately. So what did we learn with all of this? Well, even though we now have 15 watt wireless charging in a wireless battery pack, because of all the heat that's created when you're doing that, your efficiency goes down the drain. And previously I actually tested a 5,000 milliamp hour anchor battery pack. That one was a five watt rated and it could charge a phone like this up to about 87, not far off from this 10,000 milliamp hour pack. And because of that, and because of how thick and heavy this thing is, honestly, I don't think that it is a great purchase. Uh, I like the fact that it can output power actually up to 27 watts, which is the max your iPhone could take. It actually has 20 watt input, but it is just such an inefficient way when you have a battery pack. So I would not recommend it. I wish that Apple would make a newer version of this with USB Type-C, maybe a little bit thicker with a little bit more capacity. That would be excellent. But until then, if you had your hopes up, make sure that you don't <laughs> because it's a decent device, but it's not as good as promise. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.